Good morning, Marmy. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am having like a real heart to heart with you guys to talk to you about why I changed my channel name. So this question has actually come to me a lot in like since it happened. And then also in the most recent Q&A, I had people still asking questions as to why I changed my channel name and sort of changed my name across social media. So I'm going to talk to you guys about that today. It's a really interesting story. There's two parts to this. There's a personal part to it. And then there's a business side of things. And I'm going to talk to you about them both. And the reason this story is relevant and why I want you guys to hear it is because if you are a small business owner, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're on social media, whatever you do, you can often come across issues with other businesses trying to claim that you can't do what you're doing. So I'm gonna talk to you guys all about it today. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. I put out videos twice a week, hit the little bell so you don't miss a thing. All right, so I've got my coffee and I'm ready to go into this, basically story time is what this is, going to the story time with you guys. So for those of you who may not know, or maybe haven't been here from the beginning, my channel name, when I very, very, very first started was The Neurotic Mom Diaries. Hey guys, my name is Tina. I'm a 33 year old mom of three boys. I love that channel name. And then when I start, joined Instagram, the handle was too long for me to add and why I thought to just change my name altogether because of that, I don't know. I think I just decided that I want to do something different. So I changed everything to mom boss of three. So I was mom boss of three across YouTube. Instagram, social, everywhere. That's how that's how people knew me. And often when people see me on the street and they're saying hello, they usually say, hey, mom boss. So I had really established that personality and that sort of image for myself, mom boss of three. And it was mom boss of three, obviously, because I have three kids. Now, recently, I can't even remember how long ago it's been now. I, sometime last year, I made the switch to go with Tina Singh. And on Instagram, I could only get like the Tina Singh because of course there's lots of Tina Singhs out there. So I decided to go with the Tina Singh and to keep it consistent across platforms, I also made my YouTube with the Tina Singh. So why did I switch from going from mom boss of three to the Tina Singh? So the personal reasons were this. I had actually been thinking for a long time, maybe a year or more about the content I wanted to create and sort of what direction I want to take this channel in. And one of the things I want to do was share more lifestyle content, talk more about my life before becoming a parent and my expertise and like sort of the private practice I had before and sort of bring more of that to my YouTube channel. I also really wanted to be able to showcase a lot of my life outside of being a mom. Of course, everything I do in my life is mostly revolved around my kids, but I also want to share who I am as an individual as well. So on this channel, you'll see I share lots of different types of content. Sometimes I'm sharing like marriage and relationship advice. Sometimes I'm talking about being a first generation Canadian. Sometimes I'm talking about like organization and decluttering. And sometimes I'm talking about things like keto. Sometimes of talking about you know managing expectations and social media and all that kind of stuff and so not everything is specifically related to being a parent and I felt like I was sort of closing off a portion of the audience by sort of going by this mom boss of three name and also I'm still Tina even though I'm a mom and I want to be able to bring some of that individual self like who I am so I'm more than a mom right? I, I think all of us are more than just parents. We're more than just students. We're more than just whatever you are. So I'm more than just a mom. And so I always felt like changing just to using Tina Singh was probably the best approach to take. I had been thinking about that truthfully for over a year, but the push to actually do it and get it done actually came from the business side. So I have been on social media for five years. And I think for the first little while, maybe the first year I used Neurotic Mom Diaries. After that, I was using Mom Boss of Three and that Tina Singh just came really, really recently. So I had been using mom boss three for a long time and I never had any issues you know I sometimes would get a cease and desist for like a random person somewhere saying you can't use the words mom boss like I don't know how people think they can own the words mom boss but some people think they can then I got to a point where I realized one day on Instagram that a lot of people have the name mom boss of three something or mom boss of four or whatever then I started thinking maybe it's time for me to trademark this name knowing very well that mom boss could not be trademarked but mom boss of three in sort of entertainment services was probably more likely to be approved as a trademark so here in Canada and in many other parts of the world you have to submit a trademark application so that involves like making sure no one else has the name and sort of identifying which categories you want to trademark that name in so because this is not my area of expertise I went through my lawyer I had her help me out in submitting these trademarks and once I did that's when I ran into trouble so to get a trademark approved takes like a year and a half or two years or something and goes through a very long process but the idea is you want to get your application in as soon as you can to make sure that you're like first in line to try to get that name approved so I had two logos that I had 
trademark. So there was one old logo that was still in the process of being approved. And then a second logo that I had redesigned when I redid all of my channel art. And then I also had the, the name, like the title Mom Boss of Three in this application process. So all three of those trademarks came back to me with companies saying, you cannot use the words Mom Boss of Three. Like you can't trademark this. So the company that had the biggest issue with me using or trying to trademark this title Mom Boss of Three was actually like a multi-billion dollar corporation. It is in no way similar to my brand at all. At one point they said, we will allow you to use only your old logo and this name. And basically you and I will just come to an agreement. Like our businesses will come to an agreement and you can use it in these specific categories and we'll just let it slide. They do that because they don't want to go any further in the legal process. They're spending money on their attorneys as well. Um, and also they're just trying to like come up with a solution sort of get rid of me, right? When I sort of said, no, I've already paid for all this branding and all this, like all the stuff that I've done and I have a big identity to this name, they then continue to take it further. So their legal team has put something together. They sent it to me. I then have to submit my evidence. So it was a lot of me sort of submitting things and then also my attorney. So it gets very, very expensive. And after a certain point, I just thought to myself, is this even worth it? Because I've been thinking to change to Tina Singh anyways, and like, do I really wanna go through this battle? That's what I felt initially when it happened. And you know, talking to other people around me, a lot of people felt like you've really created an identity with Mom Boss of Three. Are you really want, do you really wanna be so quick to let that go? Here's the thing though, for me as an individual person, as an entrepreneur to go and fight this multi-billion dollar company, it would cost me so much. That being said, I think if I took it to the end and I did actually go to court to sort of fight this, I feel very confident that I would have won because there is actually no overlapping in the brands and so I feel very confident and so did my attorney that we would we would definitely win this is just do you want to spend the money to get there so this company just used their money and their power to just push me to a point where I was like this is not worth it for me financially and so before we even got to the end I kind of called it quits and I was like I'm moving to Tina Singh I do not need this headache this is something I've been thinking about for a while anyways but the reason I even pushed at all from the beginning is that I didn't want to let this corporation push me around. And that is what happens so much in this space and why I want you guys to know this story. I know so many of you are, are YouTubers or you're on social media or you've got like a side hustle or you've got a business and people come after you for copyrights like left, right and center. In all my years of using Mom Boss of Three before I tried to trademark, I think I had one cease and desist from someone and it wasn't even in my country and it just, it wasn't even the same thing, it didn't even apply. But companies are required to send out cease and desist to people if they have a trademark of some sort, like that's your responsibility. So for me, if I have a trademark, it is my responsibility to seek out anyone else who's trying to infringe on that trademark and make sure that they are sent cease and desist. So it's not just enough to have a trademark, you have to defend your trademark. That's how it is here in Canada. I can't speak to other places, but I believe the US is very similar. So here's what I want you to take away from the story. I didn't have any issues until I tried to trademark. Once you try to trademark, everyone has a problem. All the attorneys are on top of this all the time. The lawyers are always going through those trademark journals to make sure that no one's infringing on their clients trademarks and copyrights and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't let it, willing to let a big corporation push me around. They send out cease and desist letters all the time to anyone they think might be even slightly infringing on their trademark. And I wasn't willing to let that slide. Like that's not in me to just be like, all right, you guys take it. Like I just went to a point where it just made no sense for me. And I had a lot of time to think it through. Their side had spent a lot of money uh, already trying to defend their stuff because I wasn't really backing down. The problem with them even offering me an agreement is that that means I withdraw my trademark application and I've got an agreement or understanding with this one, one corporation or this one company. If another company comes out of the woodwork and is like, just all of a sudden like on social, like, oh, you can't use this, we have the trademark, I have no protection against anyone. So me making an arrangement with this one big corporation protects me in no way other than they'll allow me to use that name. I often get the question about trademarks and I have to get the questions about what name you should have on social media. And this is the advice that I give everyone who asks me after this experience. Anything you do, if you can, do it in your own name. People cannot trademark a name. They cannot come after you for using that name because it's your name. It is the simplest way to go. It allows you to be anything you want to be in that name. So if I'm mom boss of three, I'm kind of pigeonholing myself into the category of mom and parenting, right? Whereas Tina Singh can sort of branch off to do whatever, whatever else she wants to do. So if you are setting something up, use your own name if possible, if applicable, every situation is different. But my best advice is use your own name. Because once you start using names like Mom Boss of Three, there's a lot of people who are gonna think you're infringing on the copyright or trademark that they might have. My other piece of advice is for people who maybe received a cease and desist email or letter that seemed very scary from another corporation, please know that them sending you a cease and desist doesn't necessarily mean that you need to stop 
using that name or that slogan or that logo. Check with a lawyer, check with an attorney, do your own research. Companies are supposed to defend their trademarks, like I said, and they will send those out to anyone even slightly similar in any way, even if it's just one word. So check with a lawyer, consult with them before you decide to change everything that you've got on social media. And going along with that, do not let businesses and people push you around. Don't let people scare you and intimidate you into changing all of your stuff on social media. I know that I did, but in the end, and the choice was either I pay financially to keep it and I was thinking of changing anyways or I just cut my losses and change it and go on to creating content in a lot of different areas like I wanted to anyways. So for me, it was okay. But if I had been really, really stuck and tied on the mom boss or three, I can't even tell you how much money I would have had to pay to try to keep that name. So that's the long and the short of it. On the personal side, I was thinking about doing it anyways. On the business side of it, I kind of got pushed by a company until the point where I couldn't afford to defend it anymore. And and I decided to cut my losses and move on. Another thing that I've sort of also learned through this process, which is kind of a pride point for me, is that big corporations can be intimidated by little people. I am a small person in the social media world, but for some reason, because I submitted a trademark, these people did not leave me alone until it was like either accept our agreement, withdraw your application, or we're gonna like keep providing evidence as to why you're infringing on our trademark. So there you go. I must be intimidating to someone somewhere. So now that it's been several months since I've been using Tina Singh, I can tell you that I feel so happy that this decision kind of got made for me, but I made the final push to make it because I can share so much more about who I am and my life and my life other than being a mom. I'm more than a mom. We're all more than just what we do, right? So I'm excited to share more and more of that with you guys. So yeah, I guess that's kind of it. I changed my name because I kind of was left with no choice, but I'm really happy that it happened. But I actually want to hear from you guys. What did you guys think? think when you saw the name change like did you guys have any thoughts about it I know those of you who've been following me on my channel for a long time I got a lot of DMs and emails from people actually saying like what happened is there something going on how can you change because I was like so tied to that mom boss of three name so I would love to hear from you guys what did you guys think about the change oh, when what do you guys think about my reasoning like what do you think about switching from mom boss of three to that Tina Singh because I want to share more about who I am what are your thoughts on that have you been through a similar experience if you're an entrepreneur business owner and something similar has happened to you let me know in the comments down below I want to hear from you I feel like as small businesses and entrepreneurs we need to talk about this kind of stuff because there's a lot of people getting bullied in this space and I don't want that to happen to anyone. So if anyone can learn from my experience um, and sort of take that advice that I have, that to go by your name because you will not run into trademark issues, um, take that advice, please. I also will say that if you don't have a reason to trademark, if you're not worried about a huge amount of competition coming and taking that name, then I wouldn't bother trademarking. But I think generally in business, they say it's smart to trademark your stuff so it's unique to you. So I guess talk to a lawyer. I think it doesn't hurt to talk to a lawyer. A lot of lawyers are really great and will have let you have a quick telephone consultation with them, have someone that you can call on in situations where you get a cease and desist and you wanna run it by them. Or when you're in situations like me and corporations are like, oh, we'll run you to the ground if you don't change your name. You want people in your corner for those moments when that happens. So if you guys have any questions about sort of my experience and what I went through, if you've gone through something similar, please let me know in the comments down below and as always I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe for more videos and follow me on my daily vlogs march on mermy